Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic, along with Jax the Cat and Terry the Baby Kitten. Hope you guys are doing well. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet, and I'll put a link below in the video description if you need some mobile, limited internet. I'm leaving Zion Retreat here, going down a gravel road right here. I don't know if you can see this twisting, winding road in front of us. It's straight up to heaven here. And uh, at least that part is paved up there, but it is gnarly. This campground has uh, got a lot of quirks. The whole one way straight uphill. I don't even know if you guys can see the angle of this road. Now we are about to make our ascent. I'm just waiting to the last minute here because this is the last turnaround. And as long as somebody doesn't come down the hill right now, like right now, I'm gonna floor it because it, it's gonna take all Miranda's got with the help of tater top pushing and still we're probably going to struggle. That's it guys. There's also a sign here that says stay to the right. You might fit two cars side by side, but an RV pretty much takes up the whole way. I wish you could see how steep this hill is. Oh, we're getting out of Flushing, Ohio today and gonna go do some boondocking. How does that sound? Yeah, I, you know, this campground was nice because I could plug into 50 amp and run both air conditioners when I needed to. But today, ironically, the high where I'm going is only 72 degrees in the summer. Yes. I'm a little worried that we can't pick up any more speed, but we're still traveling up. We're not going backwards. And this is the really sketchy part where they put this little wall right here and a gate. And I mean, it is toit, toit, toit. And then we're going even higher and slowing down. Ho, ho, ho. And we made it. Awesome, barely. Which way are we going? We're going this way, all right. Oh, I still got Google Maps going here, but we just lost service officially. I, I am way, <laughs> way out in the boonies, guys. Way out in the boonies. But that's what I wanted. That's why I came out here to change things up, so. Oh, look how pretty this is, though. We are in the forest, y'all. So remember back home, Washington State, I love the Capital State Forest and those free campgrounds. Well, I found this one on freecampsites.net and it is similar. So this is a state forest area with free camping, supposedly. Some low hanging branches here, but. Ah, come on, man. Enter, forest closes at 11 p.m. What? So it's an actual campground though, right? Maybe I have to drive a little farther to get to the campground. What does this say? Campers must use self-registration located at the restrooms. No parking on grass. Oh, you know what? Guys, guys, this is an actual campground. I don't know what is going on there. Looks like someone left a ton of garbage in a barbecue. Maybe they're coming back. Let's stay away from that one. That's a really messy camp. Yeah, so look at all this. Just little slips. I don't know how many campsites they really have. I kind of kind of want to drive through, though, and see what there is. Somebody dropped off a, a Nomad. That's an old Nomad trailer there. Yeah. Is that it? That's site seven. And there's the restrooms. That's it. There's seven sites. And it looks like only one's occupied. And the other one, I'm, I'm going to give the other guy the benefit of the doubt and say he's going to come back and pick up all that trash. So, which one do I want? Things to think about. Do I want to try to get the southern sky for my dish satellite on the roof? These are things to consider, so I will get parked on this next trip through and I'll get back to you, let you know where I got. Wow, I am really, really impressed. I forgot to catch the name of this place, but I'll magically put it right here somewhere where you can where you can find out. I don't have any service right now, so I can't check. So I scoped out all the sites and uh, I did pick the one that gives me both satellite TV with the Southern sky. Also, it's the sunniest site. I mean, I got all that solar on the roof. Uh, it does say you can stay here for up to 14 days for free 99. That's right, it's free boondocking. Got Miranda and Tater Tot fitting in my sight just fine off the road. Even got the slide out and the awning out. Now, yes, I did use the term boondocking. 
No matter what, for some reason I have a bunch of viewers out there who, who have their own definitions for everything going on in the RV community. Yes, I am boondock. No, you're not, Eric, you're at a campground. Nope, get on your little Google machine there and say, what is the definition of boondocking? Boondocking is camping in your RV without any hookups, period. There's no more after that. <laughs> So everybody else who adds, it has to be in the desert, it, it has to be at a wall. No, 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 no. Those are all just uh, ways of boondocking. This is 100% boondocking. If there was a subcategory, I'd call it campground boondocking without hookups, but I won't need the generator at all. I'm going to stay here for two or three nights. I'm going to go register right now, actually. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, look at this. Welcome to Ron Scheim Campground. And we are in the Harrison State Forest, if I didn't already put that text below. So it's part of the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, just like back home. Man, that's cool. I personally definitely needed to go boondock. This is just, uh, this is what you, you work so hard for, you know, to get 70 degrees, solar sunshine, TV. You know, I can run some fans and stuff like that. So I could not be happier with how this day is turning out. You see who's in the windshield? Look at that big handsome boy. He wants to come outside. Where's your sister? She hasn't come out yet, Dad. Okay. All right, my monsters. I'm gonna go check out the dam real quick, okay? Tara, is that okay? And then I'll come back and feed the kitties lunch. You want lunch when I get back, Jax? Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Keep it cool in here, okay? Here, I'll even open, I'll turn the fan on low here, blowing that out. Turn this guy on low here to bring some air through across the window like that. Yeah, okay. You be good. I'm gonna set the alarm and everything. Again, you know, there's some trust involved in leaving your whole life behind. Uh, currently, right now, I'm convinced that there's there's nobody here. So, we'll be fine. I'm gonna go check out this dam down here. All right, we're gonna do it. It is definitely uh, straight downhill. <laughs> so it's gonna be quite a hike back up. Well, this is a nice, peaceful, wide trail here. Holy cow, this is so beautiful. I've never in my life thought that that summering in Ohio could be so awesome. This is great. Ooh, I see water. You guys see water through the trees? No, I'm a happy camper. Holy. Did I mention this is free, guys? Free 99. I may have found my new favorite all-time campground in the country today. What? That looks like a good kayaking or possibly even floating. Get my floater out and go float inside and cool off. It's not hot right now. Let's be honest, I probably wouldn't love this place if it were still upwards of 100 degrees like it was last week in Ohio and, and still raining. So this is just one of those weird weeks where the temperature is perfect and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm changing my plans a little bit. So actually, when I was coming down on this trail, I saw a couple other cool places to uh, possibly bring the e-bike in a fishing pole down. So I'm gonna go back, check in on the kitties. There's more stairs. Oh, I can't not hike up this hill. I'm so curious about where this leads. Need to get my steps. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go grab the fishing pole. And actually, this time, I'm going to bring the e-bike down. Okay, I'm already tired. I'll, I'll meet you guys at the top. I'm assuming this will let me out at the campground above. There we go. I'm going to use the uh, back rack and a bungee to secure the tackle box there. And then I'll just uh, carry the pole in my hand. Hey, it kind of matches the bike. And I'm going to be easy with the e-bike because, again, I don't have front brakes. The hydraulic brakes blew out on me here. So we'll just take it, take it really, really easy here and go find a fishing hole. <laughs> There's no fish in there. No way. All right, but first step here, we got to get the most important supply. No, not a fishing license. A cold one. A cold one. <laughs> now I can fish. A little foamy there. Now I can catch fish. Yeah. Ah, 
not that fun if you're not catching fish. Let's try something different. Let's go back to the RV and try something different. There we go. Let's go ahead and give this one a shot. You guys haven't seen this. See the logo there? Brute Magnetics. Yeah, I may have uh, bumped up my magnet fishing game here. So let's go take down. I saw a uh, dock over there that might work, a little fishing dock. Actually, I should probably bring the fish. I can only do one or the other. I'm gonna bring this down there. I'm gonna show you what's in this box when we get there. Yup. This ought to be a good spot. This is an actual fishing dock here. And a little bobber there. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking if we just tap on the bottom, this would be a great place to try out my, my new magnet. Uh-huh. It's not that deep. But you know, people fishing lose all sorts of things. I've found camping chairs off fishing docks, flashlights. That's where I got my fillet knife that's in my toolbox. So um, yeah, let's give it a shot here. Yeah, so I, I splurged a little bit, but this is an investment because I enjoy magnet fishing so much. This is brand new from Brute Magnetics. This is their most powerful kit that they offer. Okay, and I'm gonna show you here. Pull this guy out. Ugh. I'll put it, Ugh. and I'm already stuck on something, really. <sighs> oh my gosh. Okay, there it is, guys, as you can see it in my hand. This is a 3,600 pound double-sided fishing magnet. So to put that into perspective, so I have two of these back in the RV. They're both 1,800 pound. One of them is, is this style where you can tap the bottom and just kind of run it along the base here. The other one attaches right there where that hole is. More on that in just a second. You can chuck that one out, pull it back to you, and it'll grab. This is double the capacity of both of those, and it does both. Yeah, it's just all in one. Right now, it's got the tap a tap a tap on the bottom, and there's the thread. You just switch this, or it came with a second one of these. You can thread right into there, throw it out there, and then pull it back and see what you get. Like I hinted at, this is the most powerful fishing magnet on the market right now, as far as Brute Magnetics and other companies. It's monstrously heavy, so, you know, chucking it out there, pulling it back, and plus, if this catches a steel bridge down below where you, you're not getting it back. <laughs> I don't care how hard you pull and how many people you have pulling, you're gonna break your paracord before you <laughs> pull this guy back up. So we'll see how this goes. I just wanna, I just wanna tap, the, tap the bottom here and see what we can get. So I'll put the camera on my chest mount there. And by the way, I am gonna keep my other two magnets. I'm gonna travel with them. I'm just not gonna have them ex as accessible as, as this kit right here. That way, in case I meet any other friends on the road who wanna go with me, I can have two other people with their magnets on a different part of the dock. So yeah, this is some pretty good paracord. I forgot what the rating that comes in this kit, but it's rated for this magnet for being able to pull it up. So should be good, let me put my gloves on. So what do you do for tying this off? Well, you got a couple options. You can use the uh, boat anchors that are on the dock right there or some people just tie this to their waist or their foot or something all right first drop here very slow let's see how deep it is right there it's only about two feet and so this is my general technique there's also a lot of moss and stuff in there just kind of tap the bottom and and definitely try to stay away from this side right there because there could be metal i mean this seems to be a mostly wood dock but you never know I think I even see something right there. I'm gonna tap it right on that weird piece of metal. Let's pull it up and see what we got here. We got a rock on the top and nothing, not a darn thing. All right, let's go back to the other side here. Okay, it's about three or four feet deep right here. Just watch your feet on these stupid anchor things. I almost fell off when I first got to the dock here. Yeah, I heard that. I, you never know. It could just be the actual, the, the ring on the actual magnet. You're not going to lose anything, so I just like to keep going just in case. I find a lot of hooks in here. Yeah, that's something. Oh, oh my gosh. What the heck? Ooh! That's like an old flathead screwdriver with a wooden handle. You know what? 
That sucker there, that might be worth something. That's almost an antique there. Isn't that weird? It's missing part of the wood handle there, and I don't know how long it's been down there or why it's down there. Ah, score. See, right there, I can definitely see the bottom. It's just very, very sandy. But right in here, like this, see this green stuff, this moss? That's where if you drop something, it's like, oh, I can't grab it because I can't see it. So I like to go extra in there. I know it's stirring up a lot of the dirt. And I got a bunch of seaweed. Awesome. Okay, maybe I don't like the seaweed as much. It's like three straight pulls with nothing but seaweed. <laughs> Oh, do you hear that? Did you hear that? That was a loud metal sound. I don't feel anything though, and I almost slipped on that stupid thing again. Let's just see and make sure. Seaweed. Oh, wait a minute. Oh my gosh, guys. Holy, look at that nail! <laughs> That is a monster old rusty nail. Think it's part of the dock? No, these are all small. I don't know. I don't know what that could have been from. That's cool though. Wow, I like that more than my screwdriver. Where's my, oh, got tangled up in the cord. All right, well, that's not bad for my first day. I don't think I'm gonna keep either of these. Well, no, I might, that's kind of cool. The important details here. I didn't lose my magnet on the first day. Found some cool stuff. And honestly, nearly every single time I've done this, even if it's just bottle caps and hooks and stuff like that, I always, I personally always have so much more fun magnet fishing than actual fish fishing. And that's just me personal. I think you just got to find something on the road that makes you happy. And that way it gets you outside the RV. You get looking forward to it. It's like, ooh, I bet that dock. Ooh, I bet I'll find a murder weapon in that river. Like the ones you drive over and like there's nobody around. You're like, oh yeah, somebody tossed something out their door. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I'm going to head back to the RV though. All right, Tara, where are we off to? We got to tell everybody. So this is actually going to be Tara's last time using this harness. She's grown out of it. I can still get two fingers there, but this this piece right there is now too tight. So um, if you need any proof that she has been growing, she is getting big. She is not a tiny kitten anymore, but she's doing so good on her leash. She, she still just kind of walks me around and gets spooked sometimes if like a, a stick snaps or something like that. But I can, I can pretty much trust her, you know? One thing she definitely doesn't do that Jax does is eat grass and then puke it up. Jax will just sit here and just chomp on grass all day. I can hear Jax crying in the RV. You're next, Jax. I still do this one at a time because it's too stressful for Dad to keep track of two kitties outside. She's not much of a, a picnic table kitty like, like Jax is. He, he goes for these. She'd rather explore in the grass most of the time. But what do you think, girl? Yep, I'm going to find those crows, man. I don't think you want to mess with those crows, to be honest with you. I think they'll mess you up, Tara. Yeah, she's like, I ain't scared. I'm a big kitty now. Well, you better be careful, girl. All right, you ready to go back inside and give Jax a turn? No, still going? All right, I'm go till you're tired. All right, Jax, it's your turn. Are you ready? Man, I was born ready. That's straight for the grass. Do you see that? Oh, no, he's gonna run now, okay. You're not gonna go straight to the picnic table? You usually do. So I don't have a way to really get Tara back except just for when she's done. I, you know, I just gotta pick her up and bring her back. Jax is easy, I just use the, the uh, T word and he comes running back to the RV. Eat some grass and then puke it up, okay. Come on. Oh my, I'm getting some spark of energy. He's like, man, I found a picnic table, Dad. I found it and I need to go explore it. I need to make sure it's, it's, it's a real picnic table. It's a real one, Jax, I checked. All right, you're a good boy. Yeah, you're showing your little sister how to do it? Yeah, because I, I trust you sometimes. Tara, I don't know, she's quicker than you. Yeah, she might get away if I take the leash off or if I, or I let go of the leash, you know? Yeah, she might, I don't know. All right, so guys, Jax and I are gonna enjoy our walk here and I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out. But like I said, I'll be here a couple days. I got tater tot, the car, to go explore and stuff, so maybe in the next video we'll uh, go find some quirky away from the campground. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my camp on, though, for right now. Thanks for joining me, guys. I appreciate you all. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <music>